Okay. So welcome to this uh, second class of the HEI course. Uh, just one word, just to introduce myself. Uh, my I am uh, Fulvio Corno. Um, yeah, we are the, the second teacher in this course. And uh, as Luigi probably already told you yesterday, I will uh, give uh, uh, say mostly the, the lectures in the first half of the course. Uh, um, uh, while Luigi will uh, deal more uh, with the with the second part of the course, just for let's say logistic reason, organization reasons. Okay, but we are together in uh, in the delivery of this course. Okay, so today we try to answer uh, <laughs> the meta question uh, of why are we here, <laughs> what are we doing here, and try to understand uh, what we mean by a human computer interaction. Then. The rest of the course will be on, on say, understanding and managing the processes uh, for designing systems, taking into account uh, ACI requirements. Uh, but uh, initially, we want to understand okay what is the the, the domain uh, in which we are uh, we are working. Uh, so basically, we'll try to uh, give some light or some definitions to terms like uh, ACI, uh, usability, what do we mean, what are the facets uh, of these different uh, terms, uh, and start having a, a bit of discussion about the processes, okay? Uh, usability doesn't come from uh, from the sky, okay? It doesn't uh, appear magically. A system is very usable and another system is very uh, difficult to use. Uh, this doesn't come from external factors. It comes from taking into account uh, in the whole design process uh, of the uh, user interaction of the system with the users, with all the users with the systems and so on. And, and so we'll talk uh, uh, a bit about also the design processes that will guarantee usability. Usability is not something that you can add at the end, it's something that you could put at the beginning and follow through all the design process. Hmm. Okay, so these are uh there are many many different uh, say terms uh, definitions uh, concepts uh, that in in some way in one way or, or another uh, uh, are related to each other and we are trying to touch some of them or um, or to at least understand uh, the relationships uh, in, in this course um first of all uh, we are using the term uh, human computer interaction aci let me okay uh, the term uh, human computer interaction uh, there are uh, related terms uh, some are uh, maybe some of you have heard the man machine interaction uh, we don't like it very much because uh, man is uh, you know a male word it's a bit more sexist than human which is more general and uh, um, the, the other uh, definition is HMI, human machine interaction. And you see a lot of this, uh, uh, say, definition, a lot of this uh, for, say, formulation of, of, the, of the discipline in the industrial sector. So, uh, for example, if you're driving, uh, you're designing a car system, uh, they talk about the HMI system of the car, the HMI system of a cockpit of a, of a plane and so on. Um, basically because the interface that you are providing is not an interface basically with a computer, but with a machine, something that is larger, that also contains computers. And they are computer operated, of course, uh, but they are more than that. Okay, so the kind of interaction is more, is more complex rather than just you know, interacting with a website or with, a, with an application on, on your computer. Um, but basically, from our part, was the kind of design methods, the kind of design thinking, uh, they are quite similar. So these definitions for us, uh, we don't we don't need it. We don't want to do any any difference between these. Um, and we, uh, of course, uh, uh, human computer is is uh, about uh, the user interfaces. Huh? In a way, we are building user interfaces, but in the same way, we are also uh, constrained by the capabilities of the current user interface. So you are not designing your interfaces from scratch. You are using uh, the current screen. You're using the current operating system, the current browsers. And so your interface, OK, you are designing it, uh, but uh, you need to take into account what is provided already 
uh, by the, the libraries, by the devices. Okay, see, if you want to have a very fine user interface, but you have only a small screen, you cannot do that. You should adapt in, in some way. Okay, and uh, uh, of course, we take into account that uh, our we are dealing with the say, interactive systems, a system that uh, in um, model the evolution of the application according to the interaction with the user. Hmm? Uh, which are basically most of the system, except the ones that those that do only say background tasks uh, or computations and so on. Um, I like the word system is not just a device. Okay, uh, in many cases when you are developing an application, this application will run on many devices that uh, that have different characteristics. Uh, so it's the system as a whole that is important. Hmm? It's not that buying a better device. Uh, uh, or better user interface device, it makes the applications more usable. No, it's the, it's the application uh, the, uh, as a whole that needs to be uh, usable. And then we have an, another domain which now in a way is related, uh, which is, uh, uh, okay, takes uh, again, several names. Uh, ergonomics, for example, uh, considers more the, uh, the, let's say the physical interaction uh, of the user with the system. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, maybe uh, ergonomics is for, for a chair, huh? uh, for, a, key, uh, for um, a table, okay? So where are, you are sitting in an ergonomic way, in a comfortable way, in a way that you, doesn't you know, hurt your, your back or, or, or something else. Um, but there's also the ergonomics uh, of, uh, of user interfaces. So uh, maybe some, some maybe some smartphone which is too large or too small to 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 operate uh, easily with one hand or to see uh, correctly in in the sunlight or something like that. So something like related to the physical interaction, uh, it's also it's also important. Of course, from from our point of view, which are from computer science, uh, is not uh, uh, okay. We, we hope that the devices you now have these ergonomical features, but we are not designing specifically for that. And there's also a wider point of view that is uh, that of human factors, uh, which is the interaction of the actions of a user with a system in the context of the society, let's say, in the context of uh, uh, of what happens before and death, after and outside the specific interaction. Okay, so all the problem like uh, related to psychology, related to ethics uh, of what we are doing, related to uh, the clarity or the, or the say um, deception that the user interface is trying to do on a user and so on, um, fall into the bigger uh, uh, umbrella term of uh, of human factors. Uh, these also have a quantitative uh, point of view, uh, so uh, related, to, for example, to uh, measuring uh, the performance of, of your task. Uh, okay. It's very, it's very uh, say for this to, uh, to to talk about the performance of a of a user executing a task, uh, but actually, what we want uh, is to provide our user to the uh, the, the capability of performing tasks to achieving their goals, their results uh, uh, in a performant way. So with a, a small, uh, say, waste of time, the as small as possible waste of time and with the smallest possible number of errors. And this is a factor of, of multiple of, of all the different uh, uh, facets. So uh, it's ACI is uh, uh, lives in this uh, uh, is a universe that is related to these uh, different concepts. Uh, and in the corner here, I mentioned the user-centered design, which is one possible design process. Then they, they propose some of them, but uh, uh, one is more famous than others. The user-centered design processes uh, that are processes, uh, as I said, that help us uh, achieve those results that we were mentioning before. So. Uh, in human computer interaction, what are we trying to do? Hmm. Uh, first of all, human computer interaction lives uh, in the intersection of three different uh, uh, items uh, the user, the computer, and the task. Hmm. If we don't have the specification of all three, we, are, we cannot uh, talk or think about uh, uh, um, human computer interaction. Uh, for an uh, <laughs> 
human computer they are both needed to do an interaction of course uh, so otherwise uh, it's not just uh, the user interface it's not just the screen it's not just the layout it's not just the graphics it's how the user interacts with the graphics okay um, so we need to specify who is the user and what is the computer what 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 is doing what, what is the shape where is located and who is the user is aware who is the background of this user the interest of this user hmm? uh, creating an interface uh, the, con the context in which the user is located so creating an interface for an expert person is different from creating an interface from a person that approaches the system for the first time hmm? And uh, so if you don't know the characteristic of the users, you cannot design an interface for, for everybody. And also the task is important. Uh, uh, we should be very aware that we are not designing uh, uh, systems that will try to force users to execute actions. Uh, we, try, we need to start thinking in the other way around. A user wants to accomplish a task i want to i don't know buy a ticket for my plan uh, in for the weekend hmm? okay this is my task this is my objective okay nobody uh, wakes up in the morning and says i want to go to my computer and click 27 times this is never your goal okay your goal is to buy the tickets uh, the task that you want to accomplish is buying the tickets so now we are trying to design the interaction of the user with the system in order to help the user obtain or reach his goal of buying the ticket. The, the goal is not uh, seeing website pages or uh, clicking on buttons or something like that. Those are technical means, but we should also have clear what is the, uh, the goal of the user in their mind, the task. If the task is different, then the interface will be different the uh, interaction will be different. So if the task of the user would be just to have an idea about the flight connections and not buying the tickets, then the interface should be different. Right? It should allow the user to reach their goal, which is different from before in a better way. So uh, we should always ask ourselves, why is the user spending his time right now to interact with the system? for getting information, for doing some transaction, for you know, uh, chatting with friends, uh, for having fun, for playing, whatever. In a given moment, uh, you are designing the interface uh, because you think that the, or you are planning that, the, that this part of the interface will be used by the user when the user is trying to reach a task. Hmm? The task is the goal of the user, is not the goal of the system, is not the web page is not the procedure is not the button is not the form is not the widget it's what the user has in uh, having their mind okay so we need to be very careful we are computer engineers we are we we need to be very careful not to project onto the system the characteristics of the system itself uh, we should try very strongly to think about uh, the user, what the user wants, what the user sees, what the user thinks. And then we design the things, the computer system that will achieve the, the, those goals. If we start by thinking, OK, my system is doing this and this and these are features, three, three or four features, we are not thinking about the users. We are thinking about the, the systems. What we must say also when you are in this period, no, starting to think about your projects, uh, what the user will do not the what the system will do okay what the system will do for helping the user in their task is something that we will design but firstly uh, the user is doing a task the computer is just helping the user so the goal of human computer interaction is to support the user task uh, i don't want the user to do these tasks uh, by hand i don't want to do the user to do this task with a competitor system a competitor system, I want to use the, help the user doing this task um, <clears throat> with a focus on the usability of the system. So the system supports the users. The users try to reach the task and the way in which we support this, the user should be usable. 
Uh, usability is a very uh, uh, big word, uh, it's a very big, big, big concept. Uh, for instance, it, it includes uh, the notion of usefulness, mm -hmm. something that is useful is for a purpose. Uh, maybe this purpose is also just having fun or, or, or wasting time, uh, no problem. Uh, but you, you must you know, reach this, uh, this result. Usable means okay this, uh, this is easier to uh, to understand uh, is uh, easy to use in a way okay it does not get in the way it does not create uh, uh, difficulties in understanding how to use it uh, and therefore used okay an interface a system is actually used uh, only if it does something useful for the users and it's easy to use uh, this is the, the real goal it is also i uh, say a marketing goal okay if i'm investing for building a system i want the users actually to use the system because they want because they like it because it's useful because it's fun because it's easy not because they have a gun uh, at gunpoint uh, they need to use it uh, forcibly okay they use it because they want because it gives them uh, positive results uh, human computer and uh, a task. Uh, we will discuss the task, uh, how to analyze the task better in the week number three. Uh, for the moment, uh, uh, of course, the saved ingredients are the human and the computer. Uh, of course, uh, we need to understand better what are the components of the human and what are the components of the of the computer that are involved in the interaction uh, between the two. Uh, okay, uh, the, a human. Um, at, well, in, in this case, uh, we are interested uh, in, uh, in three aspects of the human, uh, the inputs, uh, the sensory systems of the human. We, we know we have all uh, uh, five senses. Um, in this case here, I listed only, only three, no? See, uh, sight, uh, um, hearing, and, uh, and touch, haptics. Mm -hmm. Haptics stand for, for the sense of the touch. Um, we also have, uh, uh, I left out uh, uh, the taste and the smell, hmm? of, co of course, because right now computers usually, we don't lick computers or smell them, fortunately. And, uh, uh, but we also have a, a special sense, a sense of understanding what we, where we are located in the space uh, um, and what are the positions in which we live and some, some sort of internal sensing. Uh, these are the senses that can be used for providing information to the user. It's the, the other input channels of the human. And the human also has some output channels where they can provide information to the system by hands. And hands means uh, typing, means moving, means touching, means, means uh, making gestures, uh, the voice, uh, speaking, uh, and the uh, Head and body. You can imagine all the uh, you know video games where you play with the um, with all these uh, mobile controllers, uh, where it's the actual posture of your body which is giving commands uh, or information to the system. And uh, from the from the complement uh, of these two input and output systems for the users are the output and input systems of the computer. Of course, we have designed this kind of peripherals, uh, inputs and output peripherals of a computer to fit with the capabilities of the humans. Okay, so the different output peripherals of the computer match with the sensory systems of the human and vice versa. The output capability of the human are, uh, say, uh, provide information are interfaced with the input peripherals uh, of the computer. So this it's not by chance, <laughs> all these peripherals were designed uh, with that uh, in, in mind. Um, and uh, not only input and output, okay, we are not just senses and uh, actions, uh, but we are uh, especially uh, uh, thinking persons and where the interaction is also um, completed and closed by the cognitive uh, processes of the human. So in a way to understand how a human interacts with the computer, we should also understand how it, the human is processing the information that comes from the computer and through this processing, how the user can 
react and provide information back to the computer for the next step where to click for example or what to where to or how, what to speak or something like that and cognitive processes basically are based uh, on perception so uh, the sensory systems give only raw information raw data which are there composed by the, by our perceptive um, say systems uh, in order to form an understanding of what we are seeing of what we are hearing uh, in our mind and that's important also is the memory capability of our brain uh, when we click on a link uh, you should remember what was in the, in the previous page or not uh, and so the our actions depend also on what are our capability to remember the flow of interactions for example and the system of course will need to help that so in for a little bit we are not going deep into this uh, say psychological uh, uh, um, well uh, but uh, uh, a little bit of how we we think basically uh, should help us uh, to understand how to build the, the computer interfaces so that it, it's a better fit and uh, and so from this overview we already understand that uh, human computer interaction requires a lot of different disciplines uh, to be mixed in to real, be really understood uh, all the cognitive science and psychology to understand all the perceptual cognitive uh, uh, skills and, uh, and the characteristics of the humans uh, the ergonomics uh, that uh, deal with the physical size and dimension and movements uh, uh, the interaction the context the social context of interactions uh, um, the business uh, market needs uh, like uh, we said uh, for example to be able to be able to ensure that uh, an application is really used and so it uh, you know, returns on the investment. Um, a good part, uh, an important part uh, of human computer interaction is also design, okay? Uh, graphical design producing uh, interact, uh, presentations that static or dynamic that are um, really uh, well designed so that the users can uh, really understand the, the information okay but uh, design is not uh, interaction okay the interaction is much more than just making a very nice web page uh, with nice colors uh, and nice patterns uh, because maybe even a very nice looking web page is uh, terrible to use hmm? we will see more of them um, and also writing hmm? the, actually if you interact with a web page you, you see layout uh, colors spaces borders and text and some images of course okay that means normally part of the of the design so these are the two components uh, but by themselves uh, that are important but that by themselves they're not sufficient and of course in the middle we have all the computer engineering aspects uh, okay uh, to make all of this happen and this of course will be our focus okay how to build uh, the artifacts uh, the software in some cases also the hardware uh, that guarantees a good interaction uh, so in theory a person a computer engineer in work working in human computer interaction should be normally interacting with people from other disciplines because everyone contributes their their own point of view their own requirements and of course we are more focused on the how to obtain the result but take into account all these other needs it's very hard and very difficult for us which are we computer engineers we have a binary uh, logic mind uh, to try to interact and understand with all these other ways of thinking and with these other branches of, of, of science but if we don't do that if we think too much like a computer thinks which is common to most, most of us uh, nerd computer engineers uh, we will build uh, systems that only machines or nerds will want to use in order to build a system that is really useful and usable by everybody we need to mm, try to understand the bigger picture <laughs> um, and this uh, uh, bigger picture will help us uh, 
uh, in, uh, in enriching our expertise when designing, of course, because we are not designing a complete system by ourselves. A real system needs an interaction of different people. But right now, in our role of computer engineers, uh, we can understand better uh, what comes from these other disciplines that will, may help us uh, in design our systems better. Uh, so we, we build us some design methods. Uh, and uh, uh, but in, in building our designs, our system, we'll try to also to take into account that other criteria, other theories, other best practices, uh, uh, these best practices and heuristics that come from maybe the psychological studies or economic studies and so on. We don't need maybe to go or understand really the psychological studies, but we need to understand that they have developed some kind of metrics, uh, best practice uh, rules uh, that we need to follow that we want to follow. We want to understand and to follow uh, because they will provide us with a better, better final result. Um, so let's start from uh, understanding or trying to understand how user and system interact. Mm -hmm. Oh, feel free to write in the chat or to interrupt me if you have questions, if you have notes. Uh, OK, I don't want to, uh, to make the just uh, non-interactive uh, lecture okay uh, otherwise we would just create videos and upload them so um models of interaction means uh, try to understand to, to create a model okay uh, will not to be a model will uh, with the mathematical partial derivative derivatives but uh, uh, it's a general framework uh, just to understand to give us the the, the, the terms uh, of what happens when we have a user and a system that try to interact together. Uh, so we start from a user that wants to accomplish some goals in a specific application domain. Okay, uh, the application domain is, uh, you know, uh, air travel flights, and the goal is booking a flight. Okay, we are talking about that. Of course, every domain. No, uh, we should consider that there's a specific jargon, of specific possible goals. Uh, uh, so we cannot be expert of everything. If tomorrow I need to build uh, or think about a, a new application or new system for, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, well, a, a restaurant, okay, something that can be used by the restaurants, uh, uh, in a big hotel, for example, well, before before speaking, I need to study uh, who are the people working there, what are they doing, what are they thinking, what are the problems, uh, how can I help them? Probably there will be probably there will be somebody in the kitchen, somebody serving at the table, somebody um, for the paying the customers, uh, uh, and and a lot of other roles, and each of them have different uh, activities and different goals. Uh, and they have different uh, jargon terms. And until I understand all of this, I must shut up, uh, shut up and not, not try to say, OK, I know the solution. OK, I cannot propose any solution if I don't understand how these people are working. What are their, these, their goals? What is their word? And inside uh, this application domain, uh, we have uh, the users will perform some tasks, OK? And these tasks are the, the, the different parts of their work or their actions. It may not be work, it might be some for, for, for fun, huh? OK? Um, and these tasks depend, of course, uh, on the domain. Oh, we remember that the, all the, these tasks, all these uh, say activities that the humans do were already existing before the computers, most of them. OK, so it's not just something that uh, a computer enables and the user cannot do in other way. The users already know maybe how to perform some tasks in a, in a way without any computer or with some other different system. We must understand what is the task and to what goal this task is, uh, um, is directed. And uh, so when you, when you do one or two and three specific tasks uh, in a specific order, then you can reach uh, one of your goals. Mm -hmm. What I mean here is that uh, a goal is where you want to go, but maybe you cannot go there in one step. By having the tickets, uh, 
requires at least uh, the task of finding the good flight for you and paying for it and entering all the data for the payment. So there are two separate tasks and the combination of these two tasks um, contributes to a goal of having the tickets. Maybe the first task of finding the flight can also be useful for other goals, maybe for, for just exploration, which doesn't require the second task of payment. So we can think about what are the goals of the users and how these goals are decomposed into macro tasks. I think I never use the word computer or interface or button or menu. No, we, we should try to always use words referring to the user, not the computer. The computer will come later. We know it's there, okay? But we, we want, don't want to bring it too soon in our thinking. Um, we know that these two uh, humans and, and, co and systems and computers have different uh, languages, have different ways of operating, different ways of thinking. At least one of them, the user thinks uh, and the other just uh, uh, operates. We know that. And uh, um, we say that, okay, in any application or the, the system has a state and the state is described in, let's say, in computer terms. What is the variables, uh, the notion, the data available to the system at this moment? Uh, and the system has a, a language. We can, it, we can call it uh, um, core language or the system language. So the way in which the system expresses itself. An example, a button. A button is not something that we have in our real life. It's something that we are we know it's a way of for the computer to tell me that they can click on that and obtain some result. This is a the system language. I understand what the system is telling me. The system is telling me the, this information with a specific interface element or a text box. I know that I can write in there. It's not something that is um, native with human persons. We don't communicate with each other through text boxes, okay? So it's not the human language, it's the system language that we can understand. So what the user is doing is trying to understand the system language, what the system is telling me, and I can make in my mind an idea of what the system is doing and what, the, and what is the state inside the system. Uh, the system knows some information the system knows what is my next step to do. Okay, I need to understand what the system knows and what the system expects from me. Uh, but I cannot see inside the system. Whatever I can see, I can see through the interface by decoding the language in which the system is providing this information to me. At that point, I can understand what the system not is thinking, but is uh, knowing at the moment, and I can decide what I want to do. Okay, I want to enter the, uh, some information. I want to click on button number two, two and not in, on button number three. But I can make an intention to perform something only if I understand what is the current situation and what are the actions that are provided to me. And I understand it by decoding and, and recreating in my mind a state of the system by decoding the, the interface, what I see. And finally, I then uh, perform an action consistent with the understanding that I have of the interface in front of me. So the user, in a way, speaks, uh, let's say, the task language. I want to do this. I want to select a flight. But this, the, the interface speaks the core language. We have this button. We have that other button. We have this menu. And the two needs to communicate. Uh, and of course, the burden of this communication is shared. On some effort is required to the user to understand the system. If you want go to a system that you never saw before, it has different graphical conventions. It takes more time or more effort to you. But part of the effort should always must always be on the interfaces. And if we, if you compare any application from 20 years ago or 10 years ago to today, 
you will see how much easier it is, how much more intuitive it is to use any kind of application, website, uh, uh, device, and etc. compared to many years ago. And it's not by chance, it's not by luck, it's by hard work of trying to make the system more and more toward, going towards the user and more open towards uh, many users. Um, the question of Enrico was uh, uh, in the chat saying that uh, uh, the union of the task uh, can bring the user to achieve a goal. Uh, yes, uh, but it's not just a union because it's also the order. Huh? Okay, counts. So I would call it more a sequence of tasks or a combination of tasks rather than just a union, which is a, let's say, a set theory term that, brings, that doesn't give the impression of, a, of an order. Okay. But yes, the goals are decomposed into tasks. Okay, all of these can be uh, you know, graphically uh, represented in some easy ways, uh, which are but very important for us to create a mental model of how we work. Um, the most famous uh, is the interaction model proposed by normal Norman probably 40 years ago or something like that in the 70s, if I remember correctly, uh, that puts the user and the systems on two different sides of a picture and uh, it says, okay, the system presents some information in output and this user should understand from those, think, decide, and then execute some actions. And these actions will be captured and processed by the input uh, devices of the system. So the interaction between the system and the user is done on these two channels, with these two flows. The user is constantly evaluating what the system is telling him through the screen, with the, you know, the audio, with the now, uh, sounds, uh, uh, and uh, all the other outputs the system is providing. And constantly, the user is evaluating what the system is telling them. And at the same time, the user, when it decides that he wants to do something, then he should understand how to execute it using the available inputs uh, provided by the system. Um, oh, sorry, where did I click? So the execution, let's start uh, from, you open uh, you know, an interface, an application, a web page, or you, you open Word, a word processing program, and you want to do something. You want to write a paragraph or write an email, for example. So first of all, we, you, want to, you must decide what you want to do. I want to write an email, a composing new email. OK, this is my goal. Uh, I want to write a message it has nothing to do with computers. Now we want to execute this task reach this goal by interacting with the computer. And so first of all, uh, how? So, okay, I want to write a message. How? Well, I should create a new message in my email system. Uh, so I'm translating what I want to achieve into what actions I uh, require I need to request from our, my system in order to start this operation. I know that the system has a function for creating a new message. So that is how I will do that. The goal is to write a message. The means, uh, the intention is, uh, no, which is called the ERD intention, is uh, how I do that. OK, I create a new message. What are the mechanics? Uh, for creating a new message. Okay, maybe there's a toolbar button, maybe there is a keyboard shortcut, maybe there is a menu uh, item, maybe there's a contextual menu item, uh, maybe I have a special key on my keyboard, maybe uh, just a voice command. So the same action can be performed in different ways. And many good say, user interfaces just provide me with this capability of doing the same operation in different ways. It is good, and we'll see that why it is good. But uh, in my mind, from the idea, I need to 
and say uh, execute the action of creating a new message i then will decide which is the action the, the practical action sequence i want to click on that button i want to select that uh, menu voice control m on the keyboard or whatever so it's my decision i know which are the options uh, in a way and we'll see in a moment how can i know which are the options uh, and so I decide which is uh, the action that I want to perform. And finally, I will perform the action. I will try to perform the action. Um, trying to perform the actions, uh, uh, maybe it's easier. Um, if the if the icon I need to click is very very tiny, uh, it will be more difficult to execute. If the icon is uh, more more comfortable, well, that will be easier in that case. Okay. If uh, selecting something from the menu is very hard because the menu will keep closing if I move the mouse, it will be more difficult. In other cases, it will be easier. So uh, knowing that the knowledge that I need to click this icon doesn't imply that, OK, the work is done. The user knows that he needs to click this icon. Then there's, there's the physical action of clicking the icon, which is also important to get right. Each of these steps is an opportunity for doing well or an opportunity for creating obstacles to the user. And so at this point, the user finally clicks on that icon. The system reacts. OK, this part, we know that. OK, I know we need to register an event lander and then, OK. And what is the final effect for the user of the, having clicked on that icon. The effect is that something changes on the interface. If I click on an icon and nothing happens, my brain will tell me you didn't click right. Your click was wrong. If I click on an icon and I see something happen, okay, I'm assuming and cause effect relationship and I learn that clicking on that icon will make that happen, of course. And uh, the system should be as open as possible to this kind of interpretation so that the user should always be able to understand what's happened, what will, what will happen when we, he will do some action and what has just happened because the user did some action. Hmm? Uh, the... the um, it's important for the system to be as transparent as possible, hmm? except in, uh, you know, uh, games or challenges or, uh, you know, like uh, escape, the escape room, uh, escape the box uh, games where actually uh, the, the, the game is, uh, is discovering strange behaviors of the object that you have there. Normally you want to be transparent. Um, concerning the question of David, David which ask, who is asking, which is the difference between point two and three? Um, as I said, uh, point two decides, uh, like, like in my, my example, I need to create a new message. And point three is, uh, I will create a new message by clicking on the icon. So what is the actual uh, interface interaction? that I will do for executing this. They could be uh, identical or similar only if there is one option. If there's only one way of performing uh, uh, an action, then the two will, will collapse. But in many cases, there are many ways of reaching the same result. And so first I decide uh, what is the comment I want to give. And then I decide the, the mechanics of achieving this comment. Usually, point three, you, we are not aware of that. Okay, it's just so intuitive that we go and click there. But actually, the fact that we are not aware of this, or the fact that we are thinking about uh, choosing between menu or icon or keyboard shortcut, just to make an example, it's uh, the result of a good design, because we are doing that intuitively and we are not thinking about it anymore. It becomes subconscious that is one of the goals of the or good design to push things down from the uh, say uh, reasoning level to the subconscious level then you can execute tasks without thinking about them and you feel productive okay and you are productive 
um, but in designing you you might we must be careful of the, of the difference okay um, uh, by the way um, we, we said before how can the user know what are the possible action sequences okay what are the possible actions uh, for a given uh, a given interaction and because the user will uh, is able to understand from the system what are the po possible actions that are offered to to the user so uh, and, it's, and that's where the, the loop will close so when the user uh, say we imagine that the user clicked on the on the icon and the system will change the screen okay and so when i see the screen change first of all i perceive that something has changed perceiving is a short for seeing or hearing okay with my senses first of all the information gets to my senses i see that something changed okay there's a new window on the screen some button has changed the color some you know area has been opened or something like that okay a message is being deleted and sorry uh, perceiving just means that a new rectangle appeared and then i interpret this rectangle li like as a new, a new text area or a new window or a new message that has appeared on my screen so even th these two uh, we we don't feel them uh, uh usually uh, explicitly uh but uh, because they are you know, very very close to each other but uh, they involve different parts of our co cognitive processes one is perception is just seeing things uh, saying okay we have a rectangle we have a, a color we have a text and then we interpret this system state and say okay this will this is a window this is a new window this is a, a confirmation window this uh, text window where I can write and something like that. So this comes later, after, in the second step. Okay, after I see, I, I, I interpret and I give it a meaning. I know what it means. I know what that specific widget means. And by uh, understanding the meaning of the different elements on my screen, I make a, uh, an assumption I reconstruct in my mind what should be the evolution of a system state. Simple example, I, you have a list of your messages. You click on the delete button, delete icon next to one of the messages. OK, I want uh, so the action that we ex execute is clicking on the delete button. What do you see at the perceptive level? At the perceptive level, you see that some part of the picture is shifted up and one element disappears okay how do you interpret the system state you interpret that we had a list of messages and now we have one less message one message that was there before on the screen is not there anymore and so what do we think we think that the message itself has been deleted but this is our thinking. Nothing uh, ensure us that uh, the message has really been deleted. I just see it disappearing from the screen. I don't know if the message has been really deleted or maybe just moved somewhere else, or I don't know, or just they are faking the deletion, but they are keeping all the messages. I assume, I think, I reconstruct in my mind the, say, the state of the system. I imagine the system with all my messages and I imagine that within the system, one message went away because I saw some physical representation, visual representation of the message on the screen disappear. So something that happened on the screen is uh, gives me a, some interpretation that uh, uh, enables me to imagine a state inside the system or the state, uh, sorry, a change in the state inside the system which I cannot normally see. So I can reconstruct in my mind what the system is doing uh, through the, what the system, to the information about what the system is telling me with some clues, with some, with, with its interface. Uh, so this cycle always happens in, uh, every time we are looking or using anything. And normal call these two separations 
the gulf, no? a gulf of execution and the gulf of evaluation. So it's something that keeps things separate and we must cross these gulfs every time we are interacting with the system. We see something, we understand what is there and we make a, our own idea of the state that the system will be depending on what we entered. And then we decide what to do and we decide how to do it on the system and so on. So for me, establishing the goal is something that is related to the system state. I want to delete the message, but the system state cannot mod be modified directly. I need to go through some action that will change the state. And I hope that the interface will reflect intuitively the, the change of the state. So we have something that is locked inside our brain, brain, something that is locked inside the database of the system. And we need the two to communicate and to be aligned. And they can only do that through the interaction across these gulfs uh, through the user interfaces. This is the hard task that we, that we have. The narrower we can make these two goals, uh, the more uh, intuitive and the faster will be uh, the interaction with the user. Okay, this is uh, just a picture, the original picture from, from Norman, so I didn't invent any of this. Uh, Norman goes more into even in more detail about you know, the, uh, how, how we form the goal and uh, or how we bridge these gulfs. No? We call that the bridge of execution and the bridge evaluation by analyzing what are the mental processes uh, that go into different steps uh, uh, from for the execution and uh, the, the evaluation. It calls them word instead of system or instead, uh, instead of computer because it's a very, very general um, concept. Okay, when you go to open a door and you you turn the handle of the door or you push the handle or you pull or you are doing exactly the same thing. So we will find also useful and also fun sometimes uh, to uh, seek in the real world objects uh, some parallels uh, to our interaction problems. Um, okay, this normal model was the basis on which uh, so all of our theories uh, are then developed. Uh, there are some other researchers that try to, to be more explicit uh, uh, by trying to pull out uh, the differences of the languages, okay? So you have the system language, the core language, which is the language inside the system. They found that the user interfaces has, have their, their own language, hmm? which is not directly the core language. Maybe in the 40 years ago, the only language was that the command that you need to write on the terminal. But right now we, we created a, a new set of languages, which are the visual language for web application, the visual language for desktop application, the visual language for mobile applications, and they are their own set of conventions, their own set of uh, uh, of, of tricks, uh, of, uh, of widgets, of interaction modalities, and so on. And they and they make their own languages that are the mediator, the translator between how the user thinks uh, thinks in terms of tasks. Uh, how the system thinks, thinks in terms of data. And in the middle, we have the interface that is able to transform the system data into some uh, output and the uh, user actions into some inputs. And uh, uh, okay, they give four different uh, uh, names to these separate uh, uh, tasks. For example, the system will create the user interface is the presentation phase. When I have some information and I decide how to present this phase uh, to, to this information onto the screen, for example, so we also use that in development. The, the, present, the presentation layer of an application is the part of code that deals with creating the information that will be shown to the user. And from this output of the presentation, of course, the user will try to observe and perceive and understand everything. This part on the left uh, is something that we cannot do nothing about because it's the user, how the users work. Our work will be, of course, on the right hand side uh, on deciding the interface and creating it and creating the presentation. And the same is for the execution. Um, 
the performance terms uh, it has nothing to do with uh, quantitative performance uh, it's come from just performing so or executing mm -hmm. um, so from some actions that the user perf uh, does on the user interface uh, the system will perform some internal action so when i an event is called then some specific code will be executed which is the performed code uh, related to every possible user interface interaction then again it's our job to do mm -hmm. so uh, we have the logic of the system and uh, we need to decide every state of the system how to present it and every action that we can um, use on the that the system can provide how it will be uh, made available through the interface so the interface is not only telling me what is my state it's not only telling me showing me the list of my of my email messages it also providing me with a list of the actions i can do okay maybe an action is an icon maybe an action is wipe action uh, but every interface element also tells me, okay, this is the information and this is what you can do with this information through some hints, through some widgets uh, that gives me this information and will tell me, like we were saying before, um, sorry, here, oops. How can I form my intention? I can, I, how can I know? What are the possible actions that they can achieve on a page? I can know because they have been shown to me in the previous page. And so again, the user can articulate the given action. So click on a button, write on a text box, or swipe an element or whatever, uh, because this information was uh, available on the device and you can understand it can be done. Uh, you can we cannot have any interaction with an interface if this interaction is hidden so just if you put your finger in that position something happens but in that position there's nothing okay it's simply or there you will never know that you will never learn that they can tell you and then you can learn because somebody else has told you but it's it does not come from this interaction from the user system it comes from external sources and it will make it more difficult to learn and less intuitive. And uh, uh, of course, the, uh, the golf is a, no, it's not a temporal measure. It can have a, a temporal implication. So how much time do we need to execute? Uh, but for here, here for the moment, the term golf is just to mark the distance. Okay, the two are separated by by a golf by a, a channel that you need to cross every time. Crossing takes time, of course. Crossing takes effort. And these are this time and this effort, more the effort, uh, the time is a consequence usually that we are trying to minimize. We're trying to control, basically. Hmm? Uh, okay. In the, the execution, so the system will uh, perceive the user, the, the fact that the user is, is present only on his execution, on his actions. And of course, the user may make errors. Uh, and then we have a, an asterisk in the next slide. We'll talk about the, the meaning of human errors. But the human errors may only happen in the gulf of execution. Well, really, the human errors may also happen before the gulf of evaluation. So the user understands something which is wrong. Understands that, but that by clicking on the that button, uh some action will be executed and this is wrong because that button is a for dif for a different purpose but we don't know because the, we cannot read the user's mind what we can know is that at the end the user did the wrong action clicked on the wrong button hmm? uh, so this may be uh, an execution problem or an evaluation problem because it just okay for his mind he clicked on the right button but he didn't understand the correct function of each of the of each of the, uh, the two buttons and so we have in a way two different types of errors uh, slip uh, slips and mistakes uh, slip is a manual error okay a practical error you have the right action you know what 
what to do, what is the right thing to do. But when you are executing it, you do it wrong. You, you know you want to click on the third icon, but your hand slips and you actually click on the fourth one. You want to make a double click uh, because you know you won't need to do the double click, but you are too slow and the system will uh, only perceive two single clicks. Um, and you knew what to do, but the execution of this action was difficult in some way. So it did mean that the perception phase was, was okay because you, you understood what you wanted to do and you understood what was the right action. It's only the, in the last moment here in the executing the action step that something went wrong, but you really knew what you had to do. Hmm? Uh, especially if you are in uh, how many times uh, when you are maybe with your smartphone while walking or while driving, you are clicking on the right play, place, but you knew what is the what was the, the right one. Or what do we really call mistake is that the user selected an action to do, and that action was not the correct one according to the task that the user wanted to achieve. Uh, maybe the, the user uh, clicked on the magnifying lens for uh, for because you wanted to zoom the page, and the lens instead is used for uh, searching. So the user was thinking about one kind of a convention that the um, glass icon would be for uh, zooming. And the designer of the system used a different convention where the glass is for finding. Okay, uh, out of context, uh, both inter interpretations are, are valid. If you just only see a, a glass, probably today, if I made a poll here and without all the explanation, say only show this icon, and they only asked you, what is this icon for? Probably tell me if I'm wrong, you would tell me that it's for searching, for finding. But this changes, okay? Uh, because uh, you, you can remember probably in the older version of Office, Microsoft Office or Word, PowerPoint, and so on, the icon for searching was a binocular. Okay, it's very difficult to understand because the icon was was very very small. Okay, and uh, so we have uh, we need uh, and Andrea is right. We need context to understand uh, the interface. Context may be local context. So where is the uh, this icon placed on the page? Okay, the the lens uh, would be in the top right corner. Well, it's definitely a, a search. If it's in the bottom, maybe it's a zoom or cultural context. So local context, something that is already on the page or cultural, we know from other programs that this icon, that this cat icon means save. No one is wrong. Hmm? So the location, the size, the similarity to other applications and so on are all clues. There's no rule, a hard rule, okay? Uh, there are clues that help us try to figure out what this item is doing. Uh, if we get it wrong, then the user will make a mental model of the system, which is wrong. The user will think something about the system, which is not how the system behaves. And then the user will make their own decision, which seems right, but actually totally wrong. Uh, and this is much more difficult to correct. If the slips uh, are usually um, easy to be easily correctable with um, maybe a more general spacing, a better layout, uh, uh, or some visual tricks or uh, some error prevention techniques. Uh, in this case, uh, it's more radical because actually the user is not understanding what the system is telling. Is not understanding what the system is capable to do or how the system is expected to do. And this is a very discomforting uh, say feeling for the user. You, you, this is exactly, whenever you go to the web, Polytechnic website, you have this feeling basically. So you, you don't know what, what, 
what to click, where to click. You only remember that maybe three years ago or three days ago, you could uh, reach that information, but now you don't know how, how, how and where to find it anymore, okay? Um, so this is a, is a bigger problem. And, and of course, most of our work uh, will be on, on, on this part, okay? Uh, usually the, the graphical toolkit, the visual toolkit already try to solve most of these uh, uh, problems. But the mistakes uh, are more, are harder because they lie on the, in, on the design of the, of the application itself. Uh, let's come to the asterisk. Uh, we are discussing, we were discussing the human errors, but are they really human errors or are they design errors? Uh, even talking about human errors is putting the blame onto the user. My system is fantastic. You user are stupid and they are, you are not able to use it. Hmm? We tend to think like this. Uh, we should never do that. We should never think that the user is uh, failing something. Uh, Norma already said that uh, human, what we call human errors are usually the result of a bad design. If you go to a door and you push instead of pulling or vice versa, it's not your fault, it's the door's fault. Keep that in mind always, okay? If uh, an object is difficult to use, then you are not stupid, the user is not stupid, is the object or the interface or the website or the device which has been designed badly. And this is what we want to, want to avoid. If I'm designing something, I should be, I must be aware, not should, I must be aware that this system will be used by humans. And humans are humans. They can uh, be imprecise, it can be destructive, it can be, and the system design should take into account this factor. I cannot build a system that is only usable by a perfect user that never forgets anything, that never um, clicks on the, wrong, on the wrong icon, that never misinterprets something, that never reads something just only quickly. No, because this is the nature of our users. So we cannot design um, a system for a population of target users that doesn't exist in the world. We must design for real users. And uh, um, so um, try to in incorporate in our design all the mistakes, uh, all the slips that the users uh, and try to minimize the possibility of misinterpreting or misexecuting the actions. It's our goal, the responsibility that the user makes the correct mental model in their mind is not the user's responsibility, but it's the system designer's responsibility. Okay, so our goal is to minimize what we call human errors, that it really actually are design errors. Hmm? Um, I, this, is a, this is a real life uh, uh, example. This is a picture that they took uh, once in a in an apartment where there was a lot of home automation before the Alexa and the Google Home stuff. And so home automation uh, took the form of many fixtures, okay? All the switches in your house um, installed there. So this is an example of a system that was very powerful. This apartment has any sort of automation, lights, doors, uh, curtains, windows. Uh, it's worth, you know, a science fiction apartment. Uh, but the user interface was really ugly. We see this picture I took uh, next to a door. Okay, there was a door, and next to it there was there were these switches. And next to every door in this apartment there was a similar number of switches. And uh, uh, you see, there's a lot of discomforting things. Uh, uh, one is uh, when you look at that, at those. Uh, the first question that comes to my mind is why are they vertical? Usually, when you have three switches, they are put in a so these these boxes are rotated, are horizontal instead of vertical. There should be a reason why they are strange, why they are different. This is how our, our brain works. If I see something ordinary, I don't make any questions. If I make something out of the ordinary, there should there, my mind tells me there should be something special about that, something different. 
this will not work like the others. And then we have difference in color. Why is this red and why is this, uh, I don't know, cream color? Uh, it turns out there's no reason. The colors were put at random during the house. So this interface is sending a lot of bad signals to the users. And instead of them, there were just black switches, one, two, three, one, two, three, and so on. No hint about which which reaches which, which. Okay, we have a feeling. Uh, we know that in our life, uh, if I have in in my in my house uh, two switches, I always get them wrong. Okay, I am sure you also do. Uh, to switch uh, the, your your uh, bedroom light, you always uh, I have, to, I have to. You have two buttons. You need to try at least four times to get it right. Okay, it's normal. Uh, imagine that this is uh, on uh, a high number of buttons, and some of them are not controlling. Uh, the light, but are controlled maybe the door on the next room. So you can maybe even an immediate feedback. So people working there really had a confusion. So what the designers did, they understood after the installation that the user could not use all these commands. And they added this sort of a small uh, icons next to each button. So, okay, this is a button that you can push on the left side or on the right side. And the left will open the door and the right one will close the door. I don't know. It looks like these icons tell me that the, the door is open and closed. Which door? I don't know. And uh, I bet you need to spend at least two or three seconds in trying to read the icons to understand. There's also a mapping to do. The left one means the left side of the button. The right one means the right side of the button. So really, I need it's it's a it's a quiz every time I go there. This is a very uh, instructive icon that uh, um, I it it changes a set of lights, and I I don't know was the genius who came out with this icon. These others are open and close the door. And there's a left arrow and a right arrow. I don't know which one is open, which one is closed, because um, left and right doesn't mean open and close, and depends on on which side is the door opening, okay, um, and and so on. So they tried to add information to a, a, a bad design, and it made it worse. Because first you don't you didn't you didn't have any clue, and then you have some clues that are confusing. So you cannot fix usability afterwards. Okay, and basically, basically, uh, you know what this tape here is because the people working in that house at a given point they were tired and just put some tape saying don't touch on some of these switches. And uh, this goes against one of the basic rules of usability. No, I, I very, like very much this, this book uh, and the title tells me 90% of what I need to do, but no, don't make me think. So whenever you are seeing a user that thinks about an interface, that interface is wrong, is bad. And here you really need to think every time because there's nothing that helps you uh, to short, this, the gulf here is very, very large. Of perception, basically the gulf of perception. The execution is easy; you just need to click. But understanding which button to click uh, is very hard. You need to think with the, with your conscious mind. Hmm. Uh, and for example, you are another example you are, where you are more familiar with. Uh, let's have a look. I really hate this part of the window here. The effects that you can apply on a on a character character on this is Microsoft Word. From your first sight, what are the valid combinations of checkboxes here? Here you have seven checkboxes, four and three. My mind tells me that there are 128 different valid combinations. Visually. Because you have seven checkboxes, each of them can be on or off. But really not. Because uh, the first two are 
mutually exclusive. So if I select the first, I cannot select the second and vice versa. And the three and four are the same. And these are the three also, these first two also are mutually exclusive. And the first one, the last one is independent from the others. So what, what I actually have is a three combination here times three combinations here, times three combinations here, times two combinations here. Three, 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 uh, it's 27 times two, 54, instead of 128, because some combinations are forbidden. And I know this because I can read the text. So it's not something that I get on the perception level. I see it, I'm sure, no. I see it and then I think and I understand. Or maybe I tried that in the past and I remember there was something wrong. There's nothing visually that will tell us that the second two options are independent from the first two, but they are exclusive, exclusively exclusive from one another. They just left out this in the design. While uh, for example, here is very easy that I need to click on one of these uh, items. I don't need to think. I don't even not need to understand what is cursive or grassetto. I don't even try to open an interface uh, on, a, on a language you don't understand. Try to open a website in Japanese, for example, or whatever you don't understand. And just tell me if you understand where you can click, where is the menu? How can you, you open the menu? How you can select the items? even without understanding the reading text. If you can, then it's a sign of good design. If not, if you need to read and think, it's a kind of bad design. This is from Microsoft. I'm sure they, 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 they evaluated that and they thought that this part is not very often used. And so the loss of usability was in some way acceptable and it was compensated Part, uh, impartially by the by the preview that we have uh, uh, down here, but again, it's uh, the important is that uh, it should be an explicit decision, design decision. Um, okay, we have uh, for solving this problem, uh, we have many uh, say tools in our bag right? uh, for. Uh, Oh, we are, for the interaction with the user, we had all the domain of ergonomics that we are not uh, say, uh, treating in this course. Uh, but from the system design, uh, we have all the visual languages and toolkit, user interface toolkit, toolkits uh, that we are that are integrated in our development environments. Uh, we are uh, we we learn uh, to create uh, uh, say dialogue with the users through a set of widgets, uh, dialogue windows, uh, wizards, and so on. Okay, there's the whole domain of, 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 of visual toolkits for creating the outputs and all the interactive widgets for capturing the input. We should also be aware that the designers of these toolkits, you know, are doing this for a living for their work and they are much more experts than us. Okay, and we should try as much as possible to rely on existing toolkits, on existing conventions, on existing good practices, instead of inventing our own uh, uh, solution every time that maybe is not so optimized. It may look like to us because we are you know, the creator of this strange date selector, but uh, uh, the, the, the ones that are already provided by, by the libraries uh, usually are better, for the, are better optimized uh, from this point of view. Um, and all these interface frameworks already provide us with many uh, different styles of interaction that are available. Okay, I can from the law, uh, all the command line interfaces uh, that we are still using every day when you are programming, when you are ad administering your system for some kind of task, it's the best one, and you can select that. Uh, or menus are another kind of uh, interaction that we are very familiar. Uh, in some other cases, uh, it's better to have some question answering system or natural language interaction if it, when it's work well, of course. Uh, we are very uh, much accustomed to form film interfaces, 
uh, where uh, you have a lot of forms when you can enter the data and then to go to the next page and so on. There are different styles of getting the information, asking questions, getting the answer, or giving you a form, and then you fill the form. Which one is better? It depends on the user. It depends on the task. Hmm? There's no better choice in absolute. Um, OK. This is the, the, the general uh, sorry, idea of what we are trying to achieve. How can we turn this goal of trying to you know, shorten the, uh, narrow these gulfs uh, in our design processes? Let me just give you some, some, some highlights here and then we continue next week. Um, we, as engineers, we, we need a process no, for creating, for developing systems. And uh, um, there are some processes uh, that have been developed during the years uh, that try to incorporate into our software design process or hardware design process, the elements of usability. Uh, so for example, the most famous one is the UCD, the user-centered design process, uh, where uh, you try to, uh, the, 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 this sentence is the key. Uh, take the user needs and limitation into account during each phase of the design process. So when you think about your new system that you want to create, when you're designing the interface, when you're designing the, 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 the interaction, when you are deciding how to call the names of the menu and so on, at every step, you should always take into account uh, what the user needs, what the user wants, what the user understands, what are the difficulties from the user point of view, and uh, how can you do that only by involving the users. If you ask a developer, well, why did you make this choice? And it will tell you, ah, because the users will prefer it, then that person must keep it's, it's dangerous a developer never knows what the user understands or what the user prefers only the user can tell you that unless maybe the user is a programmer itself and we are talking about a programming interface okay maybe in that case the developer and the user coincide uh, are the same class of users but in general you should never make any assumption. So whenever you say, I think, or whenever you say, I know that another person is doing or thinking something, well, stop a moment, stop for a moment and try to think, okay, let's, let's try to involve the users and see how they react. I have two options, A and B. Okay, let's put together a group of users and make a very short, maybe half an hour check, and then we have the information. So we learn uh, how to insert this kind of user interaction, user involvement uh, for in every step of design. From the initial thinking to the final test. And uh, um, in this case, at every step, you, you will avoid very, very early of making bad design choices that will be very difficult to correct at the end. You cannot put the small red icons uh, to and hope to correct something that was uh, really thought uh, um, badly. You want to avoid to build the wrong system or avoid to build a system that the user cannot uh, use. And uh, uh, the idea again is uh, to think about the users always since the very be the beginning, not just at the end, and uh, involve the users uh, with a series of techniques, uh, no? uh, what we call participatory design. Uh, in, in means including some representative of the users in the design team. Not maybe every day, but they come in every month uh, or, or to discuss the topic, to see the prototypes, to see how the project uh, evolves uh, and to give answers uh, to that. And so this is why uh, we will be learning in this course many techniques uh, for managing the users, for interacting with the user, for getting information from the user. Of course, from a user, that comes into the street, you cannot ask which icon do you prefer? No, it's out of the question. It's not their domain. I am the designer, I will select the icons, but I need to check what, how the user will understand or will react to different design choices. 
and there are techniques uh, to extract this information from the users from interviews focus groups uh, uh, interacting with prototype heuristics and so on and this is the basically the content of the course uh, what are the techniques uh, that we can insert during our design process to be able to uh, gather and exploit the knowledge of the user during our development. Uh, this can be done better probably in a, in a more agile framework where uh, the, uh, the progress, the project progresses in steps and, and every step there is a, a partial version of the system that, that is already testable. Huh? It's very difficult to have a feedback from a user when you see the user in day number one and you see the user again after two years. Uh, in between, everything may happen. Everything bad may happen. You want to have a, a process where you have intermediate steps and every each of these intermediate steps is testable because it produces something <clears throat> that is visible to the user. You cannot work two years uh, minus one month uh, for building a system, the back end, and the final month for building the front end, uh, and then just throw it uh, there. Because at the end, we think about the interface. Mm -hmm. This will never work. It will never provide uh, good results from the usability point of view. Um, OK. I will keep this for, for next time, uh, where we try to enter into more details uh, about uh, uh, what we what are the attributes, the design attributes in the design process that we need to measure and to control and to take into account. Hmm. So uh, I think today this concludes my my time basically, and uh, we will meet again uh, on next Monday. And of course, if you have any questions or, or any discussion. Uh, the Slack channel is always available. Uh, you remember that this this week, uh, so tomorrow, the lab is not yet active. It will start uh, in the 8th of, uh, of October. And uh, we will tell you that uh, if uh, we, we have the permission to make uh, one lab in person or not. Uh, right now, we don't have the permission yet. Uh, so for the moment, uh, Let's wait. We want we don't want to tell anything. But on Monday we hope to have some a bit more information. If not, we'll skip to the next week. Okay. So thank to everybody and uh, at one o'clock uh, have a nice meal. Bye bye.